Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Chen Chen, and on this channel, we talk about creating photorealistic 3D assets. So for today's video, I'm gonna show you my real-time reaction in trying out sculpting in Blender for the first time ever. Also, this could be a good beginner tutorial for someone that haven't tried Blender before. So I have Blender open here. Uh, normally, again, we get this cube. I'm going to delete it. And I'm going to import a model, a very simple little base model that I did inside of Maya, actually. Um, I did not model this in Blender because I basically don't know how. Um, actually, I kind of learned how to model it like a year and a half ago. Uh, at this point, I totally forgot about everything already and um, I will look into that too, but I figured I should, uh, one thing at a time, I'm, I'm just going to focus on learning how to sculpt at this point. It's too small, which one is OBJ, okay this one. Okay, so I watched some tutorial about sculpting in Blender, not a ton. I'm still trying to figure out the whole process, as I understand. So here, if I just go to sculpting mode, I get all those brushes, all the setups here available to me. And so obviously, first thing I have to figure out is how to actually subdivide my geometry so I can sculpt on it and start to build some shape. So. As I understand, one of the best thing uh, to do is uh, use multi-resolution uh, modifier. Um, I think in the last rendering video, I mentioned about using subdivision surface. And um, so th for that one, you can, in the viewport, subdivide your model and see it gets smoother, but you cannot modify it. So use multi-resolution one. This one you can actually subdivide and also modify it. I know there's a really great tool inside of Blender, which is Dino Topo, but I have a problem here. Uh, maybe some of you guys that is way better at Blender than me can uh, give me some information later about this, but I want to use Dino Topo as I understand is that um, basically your strokes will start to create new typology. In that way, uh, while you are changing your shape of your model, you will never run out of, uh, you will never become lower resolution and run, run out of typology because every stroke you create, it's going to be more typology and you can keep adding more typology to your model and basically sculpt whatever you want. I feel like that's a, a little bit of an equivalent inside of ZBrush as a DynaMesh in a way, but different as well. But, um, so if because my base model is super low resolution so i kind of want to subdivide it a couple more times before i use dinotopo but once i turn this on give me some warnings but once i turn this on uh my multi resolution is gone um maybe i need to apply multi resolution um, down to the mesh before I use Dynatopo. Maybe that way I can get some subdivision before I go into Dynatopo mode. But where is the apply? I couldn't find it. I saw some um, tutorial online. Maybe it was Blender 2.8, not 2.9. But when you use a subdivision surface uh, modifier, it has apply button here somewhere. So I can actually subdivide it, apply it, and then do whatever I want to the geometry afterwards. But where is the apply button? I'm sure some of you guys can help me with that. Okay, never mind. I think I found it. So if I add a new subdivision surface modifier. I don't know why this is starting looking too weird. Um, but if I subdivide it three times, and apparently the apply button is here now. So once I apply it, I can start to modify it. And also I can turn on the dyno topo option and start to add more geometry wherever I use 
wherever I draw. Press F to change your brush size. And I think we have option to change the resolution of uh, how much, how dense of a geometry we want to add whenever we do changes to the mesh. So if I use a basic draw brush, that seemed really low resolution. Oh, actually, it's, I think it's the opposite. If I want higher resolution, I need to go down the numbers. Yeah. Actually, one thing we need to talk about Dinotopo is that um, you got a few options here besides the resolution. You also have uh, the detailing one is kind of important. So right now we're on relative detail, which means that how much more geometry is going to add while you adjust the mesh is going to be relevant to how close you're looking at the mesh. So if I were zooming quite a bit, uh, it will look like I'm adding quite dense geometry. But if I zoom out, I'm adding way less. So I think the best thing to do is to change that to constant detail. This way it's not determined by how close you're looking at the geometry, it just depends on the um, resolution you set here. So I want to test out if it's like, yeah, it's more actually. When the number goes up, there's more resolution. The number goes down and you're adding a little bit less resolution, I believe. Yep. Now we have enough resolution to sculpt on. I want to start to test out the brushes and uh, see what they do. Um, I can only start to make the kind of sculpture I want if I have a good understanding of uh, which brushes I can use for what purpose. I haven't tried them out too much yet. I wanted to try, try them live on the video uh, with you guys and give you a real time feedback. Um, it's a little bit different type of video than I used to make um, because I kind of want to show you real time how I learn Blender and because I feel like a lot of uh, you guys are trying to learn different kind of software and it's always a little bit awkward in the beginning and um, uh, I feel like it will be relatable for you guys to see that even though I've been doing 3D for a while now uh, learning a new program is still not easy and um, it's always slow in the beginning. So I want to, let's try it one by one. Um, first, uh, symmetry is by default on. I'm going to turn that off. We don't need that right now. So the first one is a draw brush. It looks like the standard brush in ZBrush. I think that that's pretty much what it is. And the next one, the next one is like draw brush, but with a pinch to it. So if I give you like a sharper result, it's good for edges. The next one is called clay. I guess clay brush is clay brush. Uh, we have that equivalent inside ZBrush as well. I don't feel like it's building up too much volume. My strength is pretty high. Uh, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to use this for. Uh, the next one is clay strips. What does it do? Um, this one gives me a little bit more volume. Whenever I use clay brush, I always want... It's, it's, the purpose mostly is to build volume. So what's the next one? Clay thumb. Not quite sure what this is either. It's more digging into it than building up. Mm, layer brush, interesting. That feels more like a traditional clay brush. But it kind of, um, like the edges I create with a brush, it doesn't really erase that. It kind of keeps it, which is kind of interesting. Uh, by the way, smooth is exactly the same as the brush. Just press shift and you'll get your smooth brush. So this is Inflate, I have that in ZBrush as well. 
Simsec does the exact same job. Uh, is that blob? Yeah, it's a blob bush. I feel like it's just same flay, but it's a little more extreme, maybe. What's the next one? Crease. What does crease do? It feels like a damp standard, maybe. Um. Like the draw sharp, uh, it's more like giving the draw brush an edge, but I feel like crease is more just pushing the geometry together to create a sharper uh, effect. So what's the next one? Smooth, and so that's a smooth brush. We're using press shift, you would just get that. Flatten, does it. Uh, is the same as polish, not quite sure. Interesting. Scrape. There is quite a few brushes. I don't know if I, I want to go through all of them because uh, I don't want this video to last forever. Mm, Multiplane scrape. Okay, I figure what would be really useful, at least for me, this is the brush I use all the time, Easy Brush, is Grab. It's actually, it's the same name as Mobbox, but in ZBrush, it's probably the Move Brush. Uh, super useful brush when you sculpt. So it's good to know that there's something like that inside a blender that I can use. Uh, what's this one? Uh, elastic Deform. Huh. I guess it's like grab, but you have more of a pole to the rest of the geometry besides just the area the brush is focusing on. And snake hook, yes, yeah, super useful one. It's great for creating extra geometry that's uh, It's not, uh, it's not very sharp though, as I would imagine. I figure I can just go into the brush settings and adjust it a little bit to get the... Oh no, I'm still in uh, elastic. Oh yeah, snake hook. That's what snake hook feels like. Uh, thump. Hmm, that's an interesting name. You wouldn't understand what is it for at all. Thump. That's very interesting. Um, one really useful one that I kind of discovered is probably this cloth one. It actually gives you wrinkles. I still need to learn how to use it properly, but it's definitely interesting and give you wrinkles. I think I will show you better if I have another turn off fan on top of one now. If I increase the Geometry subdivision. We'll be able to see it better. So I subdivide it one more time. Can we do another time? Okay, and then apply. Okay. So now, if I use this, that's really cool. I think there's something like that in ZBrush as well. I haven't used it very much. And uh, I figure if you really learn how these brushes work, can really help you in terms of if you want to sculpt wrinkles on clothing. Now, I'm a little bit more familiar with um, the geometry and um, the brushes inside the blender, I'm gonna try to sculpt this thing. It's a relatively uh, easy subject. Uh, I'm gonna ease into sculpting in blender. So uh, for the rest of the video, I'm just gonna show you the time-lapse version of how I sculpted this little Buddha statue. Since the video is already super long, I'm just gonna show you the time-lapse and uh, hopefully I get a good result. Please do stay until the end of the video. I want to share with you some of my final thoughts on sculpting in Blender for the first time ever.
We are coming close to the end. I think this guy is almost done. I just need to do some smaller refinements.、Um, I think this scalp took me altogether close to two hours.、Um, I'm not super familiar with all the tools and、um, some of the brushes, so it does took me a little bit of、uh, repetition to remember some of the hockeys. But、um, but in general, it was okay. This was not a hard sculpture to make. In general, I feel like blender sculpting is quite good.、Uh, some of the brushes are very familiar to me. It's very similar to ZBrush brushes, so it's quite easy for me to pick up and just start using them. And、uh, I can have some kind of prediction of what they would do. So it doesn't take too long to get into. If you are a beginner sculptor, I definitely recommend you use Blender first. Uh, because of course it's a free software, and you can start to just trying out sculpting, and see if you like it, and see if that's something you want to do for your career before you ever invest、uh, any money into software. That is everything I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed today's video of、uh, just looking at me trying out Blender for the first time live. If you enjoy my content, please subscribe to my channel. I think around 60% of people watching my content are not subscribers. So like the video if you do, and I will see you in the next one.